to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of masculine spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. And soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now, here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm stoked to have as my guest today, Jesse Romero. We'll be getting to him in a little bit, but I want to talk today about bullying. The whole thing about bullying that we're seeing in our society today. Uh, men are being bullied just for being manly. Uh, you can't be a man anymore. And I think as some of you heard the story last week. I, I finally called out this bully out in the, out in the water He's been bullying people at this beautiful surf spot called Queens for over 20 years. I've had to back him down a couple of times. And finally, last Sunday, I thought, you know what? If he's out there, Lord, I'm going to deal with him. So I paddled out. I saw him at Queens break. I paddled out. My, my, I do another mile paddle. And then I surf on the outer breaks. And I said, if he's still there, I'm going to deal with him. And I came back in, and um, I called him out. I said, everybody in the lineup, this is a world-famous surfer. Everywhere I go in the world, France, Australia, um, California, the East Coast, anywhere I go in the world, people all know this man. He's famous because he's a bully. He's a punk, and uh, and he's famous for it. You're, you should be so proud just to know him. And he came over at me just shocked, and I said, look, I don't want to argue with you. Let's go to the beach and fight. And we came to the beach. took about five minutes to paddle. I had to keep provoking him to kind of get him to the beach because I had a plan for him. I was going to shame him publicly the way he had shamed so many uh, tourists running them over. He's taken several runs at me and my wife while we're tandem surfing. My son, when he came back from the war, uh, he hassled him out of the water. And I just was fed up with it. And I took him to the beach and in front of about 200 people in this little kind of little bay, I yelled to everybody, people, there's a, there's a world famous surfer here. He's the biggest bully in Hawaii. And he's famous for bullying tourists and bullying, um, bullied my son and all of this stuff. And I shamed him publicly. And then, of course, it came time to fight. And uh, he got in my face. I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't hit him. I pushed him back. And then by the time he came back towards me, the, the cops were there. But he got publicly shamed for what he did, all the public shaming he did. And now I have an, uh, now I have an appointment with him. Because every time I pray the rosary and I say, pray for those who most need of thy mercy, he's going to come up in my prayers. But I'm, I'm not, we got to, I, I tell you, it felt so good to back him down and, and to to. Stop the bullying. And that's what we see in our society today. Men need to stop letting the bullies rule. And the biggest bully on the block is Satan. And uh, we got to stop yielding to him and start, start facing him and fighting him. I had a guest on the show the other day and said, you know, women have wonderful peripheral vision better than men. Men, their vision is basically straight ahead. There's a story of a warrior. I was reading Warren Carroll's book on Christendom. A, uh, a great warrior in uh, in uh, the middle middle ages, late middle ages, who had all kinds of wounds, all kinds of scars, but only on his front side, because he was pressing forward into the fray, into the battle. And so, men are, are meant to look forward, to go forward, to fight the good fight, to stand their ground, to step into the breach. And people talk about rebuilding the wall, uh, like in Nehemiah. Hey, the breach in the wall is running right through your family right through your living room. Men, it's time for you to stand up, be counted. And I know you'd want to, and I know you want to. And we're here to let you, to give you some tools today. Jesse Romero and I are going to talk about spiritual warfare because we don't fight against the bully at Queens. We're fighting against uh, principalities and powers in high places. So Jesse Romero, I always refer to you as the rookie when people, you come up in conversation about every two or three weeks and I go, oh, you mean that rookie? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Thanks, Bear. Thanks for having me on. Well, we're, we're fired up. But when, when we talked this morning, I said, hey, I want to talk to you about spiritual warfare. And you go, oh, yeah, I got a new book coming out on that. You know, so obviously we're on the same page. By the way, what's the name of your book? Uh, I got one book presently on that topic. It's called here, Lord, prepare my hands for battle right here. Lord, prepare my hands for battle. Awesome. It's, uh, you can get it on my website, jesseromero.com. Uh, it's uh, probably a bestseller for Catholic men at conferences because I go specifically through how to protect yourself against the devil. And how to protect your family. Hey, man, if you're not getting up a half hour early, really it should be an hour early. If you're not getting up a half hour early and slaying dragons before your family wakes up, you're a poser. You're not doing your job as a man. You can say you're a Christian, but you're not, you're not, you're not, work, you're not moving on. 
It's like these people in Waikiki, they wear these shirts that say lifeguard, you know, and they don't, they never, they even go out, go out in the water and swim. Don't huh. say you're a Catholic Christian man if you're not spending time in prayer and fighting on, doing spiritual warfare on the part of your family. Hey, Jesse, just give us uh, Spiritual Warfare 101 to start this first segment. Well, Spiritual Warfare 101, St. Paul talks about it in Ephesians chapter 6. He lays it out. He says, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. What does that mean? That means to live in a state of grace. I'll get more in, in, into that. Put on the whole armor of God. That means to live in a state of grace that you may be able to stand against the wileys of the devil, or some people say the deceptions, okay? And it goes on to say, for we can, we are not contending. The Greek word there is wrestling, wrestling. So this is close, close combat. combat. This is close quarter combat. Amen. Wrestling demons okay this is not this is not you know you, this is not long quarter combat he goes on to say but we're not contending against flesh and blood but against principalities that's a type of demon against the powers that's a type of demon against the world rulers of this present darkness those are demons against the spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places those are demons therefore take on the whole armor of god that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore having girded your loins with truth, and having put on your blessed plate of righteousness. He goes on to talk about all these weapons that we're called to have. These weapons, the Catholic Church has always said, is the person who lives in a state of grace. If you live in a state of grace, you're protected from the diabolical. That's not my opinion. Who says that? Here you go. Father Gabriel Amorth, uh, Vatican Exorcist for 31 years, says if you live in a state of grace, you're protected from the diabolical. Father Antonio Fortea, he's a doctor of exorcism from Madrid, Spain, says if you live in a state of grace, you're protected from the diabolical. Monsignor Joseph Esef, Scranton, Pennsylvania, oldest exorcist in the U.S., teaches at Mundelein Seminary, says if you live in a state of grace, you're protected from the diabolical. Father Paolo Carnan, Current exorcist right now in the Vatican says if you live in a state of grace, you're well, 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 okay, so what's a state of grace? There you go. Bingo. That's the key operative word. That's why I wrote this book right here. See that? That's why I wrote this book. What's it called? It's the Lord? How to live in a state of grace. Lord, what does it say, Trent? Lord, Trent? Lord, prepare my hands for battle. Psalm 140. By thee I can crush a troop. By thee I can leap a wall. By thee I can bend a bow of bronze. Lead me to the rock too high to climb, and I will climb it. The thing about it is when we're with the Lord, you think about it. You're just a little guy fighting Goliath, but behind you is standing the whole army of God. That's right. So what does it mean to live in a t state of grace? To live in a state of grace biblically it means to live in friendship with God. To be a friend of God is to live in a state of grace. And the biblical basis for that would be uh, James chapter 2, verse 23, James chapter 4, verse 4, James chapter 15, verses 13 to 15. If you're a friend of God, you're in a state of grace. That's what it means biblically. Now, what does it mean catechetically or doctrinally? To live in a state of grace means you live a life free from mortal sin. Did you hear that? You live a life free from mortal sin, and you also live a life, uh, even to the best to the best of your ability, you live a life free from all sin. You're you're wrestling. You're fighting against sin. Amen. You're, you're fighting. fighting against temptation yeah. and su suggestion, but a state of grace definitely means you live free from mortal sin and your soul is filled with sanctifying grace. And, how, That's what it means. and, and you know, the, the, the Catholic Church has given us these great, that we have the, these great sacraments within the church. The sacrament of reconciliation is powerful spiritual warfare. Uh, you, and you know what? Let me, let me even go further on that. I'm going to say something that's going to shock the listeners because they've probably never heard this before. The sacrament of confession is more powerful than a solemn exorcism. I'm going to say it again. The sacrament of confession is more powerful than the rite of exorcism known as the solemn exorcism. Why? Father Gabriel Amorthy explains why. He says this, Confession is a divine gift much greater than exorcism. Why? Exorcism only drives out a demon from one's body. Confession drives out evil from our soul. And confession also gives a sanctifying grace. 
Exorcism does not give you sanctifying grace because it's not a sacrament. The sacrament of confession gives you sanctifying grace, which means that it restores the life of God in your soul. You are once again a friend of God. And God is in, God's your friend. He's having dinner with you every morning, praying. You know, when you're praying, God has come into your house. When you drive the evil man out, that's not enough. You need to fill it with the presence of God, with your friend Jesus Christ, uh, and so that so that we don't worry when the demon is driven out. He doesn't come back with seven uh, friends. You know, just worse than he is. So you need to have. You can't just drive demons out you need to be filled with the holy spirit we're talking with that's right our, you don't know who no if you don't know who jesse romero is i'm not going to bother introducing him but i will say this um uh, we'll be right back with more of the bear wasn't adventure we want you guys to go to our website deepadventure.com and uh, uh subscribe to our email list you'll get to we'll send you out our radio shows the morning they're going to air on ewtn and you get them in a youtube version because you so you get to see what jesse romero how good looking he is we'll be right back with more of the bear wasnick adventure Aloha, and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite the men to go to our website, deepadventure.com, and join Bear's Man Cave. It's a secret Facebook group. You can't join it by looking for us on Facebook. Go to our website, deepadventure.com, and we will give you, by joining, subscribing, we will give you access to a private Facebook group with men only, where we, we, we challenge each other, we equip each other, we encourage each other, we mobilize each other to be men of virtue. Uh, we have uh, the men are posting through the day. One of our gentlemen recently is having a great time of depression after going through a divorce, and and we're we're having a special meeting just for him today. Uh, we have these boom these Zoom video chat meetups, very easy technology. About oh every two or three weeks, I call for a Zoom meetup, and we'll get ten to twenty thirty men show up on the video screen, and uh, we talk story, we talk a little bit with each other, and then we go through my book, Deep Adventure: of The Way of Heroic Virtues, but it's it's men from around the world gathering together and standing with each other. It's a great place to find brotherhood, and also we model what it means to have a men's group. So you can start your own. A lot of the men now within the man cave have started their own men's group. Uh, maybe it's a co coffee in the morning with some men, or or cigars and whiskey on the on the back porch, you know, every couple of weeks or something. But men need to start gathering together and challenge and equip each other. And that's why we have our rookie with us today, the rookie, I call him, Jesse Romero. I didn't even introduce you, Jesse. Everyone just must know who you are. But I don't really know, know if you remember when we met in Chicago at the Catholic Sports Hall of Fame. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Jesse was being inducted and I was being inducted. And, you know, I got inducted because I like to surf and he got inducted because he likes to beat people up. He is a former boxer and policeman, and now he's, uh, now he's, uh, you know, he's 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 a warrior for the Lord. So Jesse, Amen. you know, demons aren't real. You know, they they don't really exist. That's okay, what people that's what people think, right? Right. Okay. Good. That's a good question from a non-believer. Here's the way I would respond. Demons can demons. Let me first give a definition of a demon. They don't have a body. They don't have bones. They don't have blood. They're pure spirits. So A, they can't be seen. B, they can only be felt. You cannot see demons. You can only feel their effects. I'll say it again. You cannot see demons or angels. You can only feel their effects. It's like St. Anselm said the same thing about God. How is God known? God is known by his effects. What, what's a demon? A demon is a fallen angel. The word demon in Greek means one who divides. Were the demons roam at? Based on Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 and following, they were thrown here on planet Earth after a battle in heaven where two-thirds of the angels fought one-third of the angels that rebelled with Lucifer. Two-thirds stood with St. Michael. There was a war in heaven. The good guys expelled the bad guys from heaven. They were thrown to the earth. Just on a, on a, on a, just on a natural level, how you can tell that there's, there's demons? Turn on the news. Mm. And, and you see the evil, the absolute evil, beheadings, po polit corrupt politicians, abortion to the tune of 3,300 a day in America. Now they want to push infanticide, men getting married, uh, sex trafficking, human sex trafficking, prostitution, uh, Mexican cartels, Colombian cartel, Italian mafia. Bear, if you don't believe there's demons then you've got, you're an ostrich with your head in the sand. As a cop, I tell people there's two types of evils. 
As a cop, I dealt with secondary evil. Who's secondary evil? Evil men. That's called secondary evil. What's primary evil? Demons. Demons get men. Demons' primary evil get men secondary evil to do their bidding. Now, how do demons get do this? Demons tempt us 24-7. They tempt and suggest. Tempt and suggest. They put, they're able to put th thoughts in some way, shape, or form into our mind. And so men are constantly being attacked by what's called the ordinary activity of demons just throughout the day. It's called simple temptation. And that's why as Catholics, we've got to live in a state of grace. That's the power against the diabolical temptation and diabolical suggestion. You know, um, you know, Satan isn't equal to God. He's a created being. Correct. Sometimes people think there's this yin and yang. There's God and Satan, and they're against each other. Everything God creates is beautiful, beautiful. And one of the things he created was angels, and he created them with a free will. And Aquinas says they have a free will that once they decide something, their will locks in to their decision. It's irrevocable. It's called irrevocable. irrevocable. Once yeah. they rebelled in, in, in a heaven— um, and that's the essence of, of the demonic kingdom. If, if you want to get a sense of what the demonic kingdom is like, read C.S. Lewis's Screw Tape Letters. The demonic kingdom is run by intimidation and fear. The, the smaller demons are, are intimidated by the bigger, meaner demons. And basically, it's a whole realm of people just being bullied. But the demonic world is real, and it will... It can make itself known to you, and you better, and you should be ready for that when it happens. You know, Jesse, when I, years ago I had a youth group, and we had like five or six kids in the youth group, and I said, you know what, you're gonna, you're learning right now about the Holy Spirit, where Jesus said, "My peace I give you, my peace I leave you with you," and He breathed His Spirit, and you're experiencing that sweet, and you're experiencing that peaceful presence of the Lord. There's that peace that comes. Um, uh, with beyond understanding, you know, may the peace of God rule in of our hearts. And then later on in that same chapter, it says, may the, may the God of peace rule in our hearts. We want God to rule in our hearts. Wherever, the, wherever God rules, that's the kingdom of God. It says, thy will be done in the Our Father. That's what the kingdom of God is, is, to, is this beautiful uh, partnering and submissive, sub, submitting to God's will. But when I had this youth group, I taught them, you're going to learn about peace, but eventually you're going to learn there's a different kind. There's different kinds of peace. There's this, the spiritual presence of God that gives you peace without understanding. There's that peace that comes from having order, and that's, that's living a life of virtue. But yeah. there's the peace that comes after a victory, a war, and that's when spiritual warfare will happen. And we did this thing, Jesse, for about six or seven or eight months with just the five kids, and then... We had this group of young people that showed up that had never been to church. They were, most of them were, a lot of them were musicians or the people that followed them. And they had been doing this very innocent thing of praying to a spiritual overlord to help them with their music. And so when they would come, when they would, uh, when they would come into uh, the youth group, I would say, well, let's do what God's doing. What is God doing right now? Let's, let's, let's do what God is doing. And some, I, someone would say, you know, I really think I want to give my life to the Lord. And when we pray for them quite often, a demon would manifest, and yeah. the way it would manifest is they would be choking, they'd have trouble breathing, and we would have to cast that demon out. Um, and then they had this great infusion of God's love, and that those six people became 60 people within about 60 days. There was just this, this revival because these people were being— none of them knew about this sort of manifestation of, of demons. But tell me this, Jesse. We are baptized, we are baptized Catholics. We have— authority over demons, but there's different levels of how far we can go. First, talk to us about what it means to be oppressed, obsessed, possessed, the different the different areas like that, and then what our role can be. We're probably going to run out of time in this segment before we get to it. When that, when that, when you smell a rat, and that's the way you kind of discern a demon, you kind of like, you almost smell them, uh, you smell a rat. Something's not right with this person. How do you deal with it? So tell us, first of all, what is the different levels okay. uh, that we deal there's, with? There's two ways that demons attack human beings. Here it is. It's called the ordinary activity, and the, the second is called the extraordinary activity. So there's two levels of attacks by the diabolical. The first level of attack is called the, the ordinary activity of a demon. is called temptation and suggestion. Temptation and suggestion. That's their basic day-to-day -day operations. 
Now you have a, a more acute level of attack by the diabolical. It's called house infestation. And this is big right now on television with the whole haunted house genre and phenomenon. Those are really houses that are infested with demons. That's what it's called in, in, in Catholicism, infestation. You also have oppression, physical attacks from demons. St. Paul experienced them. Job experienced them. And then you also have obsession. These are acute mental attacks from the diabolical. Where I mean, your, 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 your thoughts are divided, you're confused, you hear voices, that's called obsession. And then finally, the final form of attack is called possession. That one's more rare, but it seems as a result of the occult, as a result of drugs, as a result of pornography, exorcists in this country are saying there's a rise in even possessions. That's where a human, a, a demon inhabits your body entirely, where they're able to use your mouth, your motor skills, your body, your, your, your limbs, uh, scramble your thoughts and they're able to inhabit your body, never the soul. A demon can never possess the soul, even in full possession. All they can do is possess the body. The soul is always the sanctuary, as the catechism says, with you and, and God. We're talking to Jesse Romero uh, about spiritual warfare. And every man, I've, I've challenged my kids when they were young, I wanted every one of them to go at least halfway to their black belt. My daughter and and Four and three sons. Two of them went all the way to black belt, but all of them went halfway. I wanted them to know how to fight. If you're a man, you need to know how to fight. And so we're going to be talking today, of course, women too. I've trained women, and it's, it's surprising some of the encounters, surprise encounters they had with men weren't expecting them to be able to fight. You, we need to be able to fight uh, spiritual warfare. We'll be right back with Jesse Romero. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know, our TV show, Long Ride Home, our motorcycle-based reality TV show, is airing on EWTN right now, season one, all 10 episodes. I think it's the 20th time they've aired it. And our TV show, our TV series continues now with season two, where we ride with Archbishop Wenske down to Miami and roll thunder all the way up to New Jersey. That'll be coming out soon, too. But, you know, you can go to iTunes, Amazon Prime Video, or Google Play, and you can buy uh, the, uh, a whole season and power watch it with your with your kids, I think it'd be a great idea to do that. So, uh, and also when you do that, it helps it helps support our, our ministry. So, uh, it's available because a lot of people have seen one or two or three episodes on EWTN, but it's a story and you want to watch it in sequence. And so you can do that by going there. We're we're talking with Jesse Romero today about spiritual warfare. You know, the demonic kingdom is a kingdom of rebels. The 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 kingdom of heaven is a kingdom where we say, "Thy will be done." Now, listen to this. Listen to this. I, I don't want to be too harsh here, but the Catholic Church is the church that Christ founded. We call the other Christians Protestants because they protested. You know, they, they broke away. And there certainly are beautiful, beautiful Christians that are not Catholic yet. <laughs> but the Catholic Church is known among the Protestants when they deal with a really tough demonic situation to go to the Catholic Church because there, uh, a, a Catholic exorcist can, has more power and authority to deal with things than, the, than the, uh, maybe just a normal uh, Protestant pastor. Why is that? Who was the man that Jesus said had more faith than anybody? Who was it? Was it a Jewish believer? No. It was a Roman centurion. And Jesus said to him, he said to him, Jesus, will you heal my servant? He goes, yeah, I'm on my way. He goes, hey, you don't even need to do that. Just speak the word and my servant will be healed, for I am a man under authority, and I have servants under me, and I say to one, go, and he goes, another one comes, and he comes. And Jesus said these words, Lo, I have not seen such great faith, not in all of Israel, because he understood authority. Catholics, Catholics are so fortunate because we live under the authority of the, of the magisterium of the church of the church that Christ founded, when you bring holy water home with you, you're bringing home something very powerful. You're bringing home the authority of the church with you. When you bless your children at night, uh, when you bless your wife, you're bringing home the authority. Talk to us a little bit, Jesse, about uh, the, the, there's two things I want to talk about. One is uh, the authority. That's so critical. And the other thing I want you to talk about is what gives a demon access? What gives him a right to be there? Because so okay. they're very legalistic. They're very pharisaical. 
Correct. Okay, start uh, out with us about authority, why that's so important and such a great blessing to be Catholic. Okay. Jesus Christ, who is God incarnate, he had power over demons. Every time demons saw him in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they said, we know who you are. You're Jesus, the Son of God. You know, Amen. You know, don't torment us until our time. You know, they all recognize his authority, and Jesus was able to cast them out. He didn't have to go through a long ritual. He just said, you know, be gone. Why? Because he's God. Now, he gave that authority to the 12 apostles. The 12 apostles were given authority also by Jesus specifically to cast, not only to baptize and evangelize, to cast out demons. Now, that authority hasn't terminated. That authority continues through the successors of the apostles we call bishops. So the bishops today that have direct apostolic succession and the apostles have the authority of Christ, the bishops today, I've told my bishops here in Phoenix, Arizona, I said, your authority is amazing. You guys have the authority to drive out demons. And they say, yeah, we do. We do. I say, you guys don't even have to, you know, ask permission from anybody. You guys have the full authority of Christ. Now, that authority is delegated to priests. All Catholic priests can do minor exorcisms. Notice what I said, minor. Okay. Mm -hmm. Every Catholic priest in the world is allowed by their ordination to do what's called minor exorcisms. Only a priest that's delegated by the bishop is allowed to do a major or a solemn exorcism, which they're allowed to use the book. It's called the Rite of Exorcism. And they're also allowed to question the demon, interrogate the demon. What's your name? How many are you? When did you come in? When are you going to leave? That can only be done in a major exorcism, not a minor exorcism. The priest needs the permission of the bishop. Now, lay Catholics have a power through their confirmation. And the, the sacrament of confirmation makes us soldiers of Christ, male and female. And so lay Catholics do have the power of what's called deliverance, setting people free from the diabolical. It's, it's a charismatic gift. Some people have it more acutely, but everybody has it by virtue of their baptism. And if you're saying, Ma, Jesse, come on, where are you getting that from? I'm flipping to the Bible. How about Romans chapter 16, verse 20? This is a universal power that was given to the baptized. Romans chapter 16, verse 20. The Bible says, Then, the, now Paul is speaking to the Roman Christians. That's the context here. The Roman baptized Christians. He says, Then the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. Your feet, Roman Christians. The, uh, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. The fact of the matter is, we also have received this power to, to pray deliverance prayers and to set people free, ourselves and our family members, from the diabolical. Where? Mark chapter 16, verse 17. Every single exorcist, when they exegete this passage, everyone says this applies to lay people. Everyone says that. Mark 16, 17. Here it is. And these signs, this is Jesus speaking, and these signs will accompany those who believe. Do you believe? I do. In my name, they will cast out demons. That verse is a verse, if you look at the Greek, it's to all the baptized. And so the Catholic Church says that we as lay people have the, the power to pray healing and deliverance prayers. Demons are legalistic. They know when they have the right to be, to torment a person or even possess a person or just harass them or vex them or annoy them. How do they know the legalities? Demons know when they have permission to harass a person. How? Mortal sin, mortal sin. It's like a big, a big sign that says vacancy, vacancy. I'm in mortal sin. They will attack you. They will vex you. They will annoy you. And in some of the worst cases, they will possess you if you call upon them through a Ouija board, through a diabolical pact, through subjugation. Now, when do demons have to leave? Demons know when they have to leave. You know when they leave? When you're in a state of grace, you're protected. Why? When you go to the sacrament of confession, if, 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 you're, if, you've been, if you're demonized, you haven't been to confession in 10 years, you've been involved in the occult pornography, you've been uh, doing incantations and hexes and going to psychics. Astrology. To now. Yeah. Astrology. What, what, you know, tarot cards. 
uh, horoscopes. The new age, the whole new age stew. Absolutely. Reiki, Enneagrams. When you go to confession, what happens is now you're receiving sanctifying grace back in your soul from Jesus. The life of Jesus is coming into your soul and evil just left. Your soul is, is like the Bible says, uh, though your sins make you scarlet red, I will make you as white as snow. Your sin is old, is, is, is as white as the wind-driven snow. You got sanctifying grace. And what happens now, it gives you strength to resist the attacks. And also when you have sanctifying grace, when you live in a state of grace, you're protected. And demons know that they can't, there's no vacancy. They can't enter and, and, and harass and torment you. Because here's what absolution does. Absolution is a Latin word. When the priest raises his hand and absolves you of your sins, the word absolution is a Latin word that, man, that means to break a legal bond, to break a legal bond. So absolution breaks you because mortal sin, whether you know it or not, you enter into a pact with the devil or a demon. You enter into a bond. Absolution breaks the bond. So powerful. You know, the, um, the feeling of uh, going to confession is so powerful because demons have, they have, if they're there, they have a right to be there. And you know, one of the, the, the cruelest things is, is as people who maybe have, uh, have had great harm t done to them. Maybe they were raped or they were abused or something. Uh, great harm has been done to them. And then they fall into bitterness and unforgiveness and all these other sorts of things. And that, that gives room for Satan to do even worse uh, work. And so that's where uh, forgiving others, that's where going to confession and receiving a uh, reconciliation, it breaks the right of that demon, you know, to, to be there and harass you. But it's very important that you, it's very important that you, you keep your house clean. Uh, and the thing is, the other thing, Jesse, is when, you, when you're living a life of grace, you can smell a rat. You know, there's people here in, in, in Hawaii, they're smoking weed down on the beach here. They've been doing that for years. They don't know how bad they smell when they walk up to you in a, in a store. They smell of marijuana, and they probably can't even smell it themselves. You know, right, like, when like, you're involved in sin and you're involved with the, the demonic, it's, it's all around you. You can't smell a rat because you're, you're living in the dumpster with them. This is Bear Wasnick. We're talking with our, our guest, Jesse Romero. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wasnick Adventure. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We have as our guest today, Jesse Romero. Jesse, do you have two books on this subject or one book right now? I got one book on this topic. Here it is. It's called Lord Prepare My Hands for Battle. Everything that I'm saying right now is in this book. I'm coming out with a second book in June. It's called The Devil in the City of Los Angeles, in the City of Angels, actually. And uh, that's the second book. But this one right now has everything that I'm saying right now. You can get it from my website, jesseromero.com. I also do a spiritual warfare podcast. I do it three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. If you go to a, an internet radio a site that I put up, it's called Virgin Most Powerful Radio. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I do a, an, an internet podcast, which I talk an hour about the diabolical. I pray for people. People call up. They're demonized. We pray over the, on, on the air. People are set free. I follow up. I make sure they're go plugged into the sacraments, plugged into the Catholic parish, make sure they're reading their Bible daily. So, uh, yeah, it's Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and that show is called Jesus 911. Jesus 911. Okay, so now here's, here's what I want to ask you to do, Jesse, uh, especially now the men and the women, but I want you to talk uh, to the men. What should their daily regimen be if they are, in fact, uh, you know, they're the ones standing in the breach? Uh, for their families, what should their daily what 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 should that look like? A, a warrior, a spiritual warrior. What 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 does his life look like? What do they need? What does that mean? Man needs to do for himself and for his family. Okay. Uh, I, again, I I talk about all that in this book. Here's what here's what it looks like. A man that wants to lead his family to a life of virtue and holiness in the heaven ultimately is he's a man that should be have a disciplined prayer life. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 6, verse 10 and 11, that Daniel, the boy prophet, would pray three times a day, even though he was a prisoner in Babylon. And there was a law that was signed by the king that Jews could not pray to God. He didn't care. He defied him. He got on his knees three times a day. The Bible says morning, midday, and evening, and he prayed. 
So my recommendation to men, prayer, a dedicated prayer life three times a day. As much as you eat is as much as you should pray. Now, throughout the day, be a contemplative. Vatican II says, be a contemplative in the modern world. Think about holy, pious thoughts. Think about goodness and beauty and truth throughout the day. Think about your family members that may be in heaven. Think about that moment you're going to see God face to face. Think about the beautiful mother of God that we have in heaven. Contemplative prayer throughout the day. It keeps you from, from your head, from your mind falling into profane, vulgar, and nasty things. Also, put on sacramentals. Wear sacramentals. That's what I would call our Christian dog tags as soldiers of Christ. The brown scapular, the miraculous medal, the St. Benedict medal, a rosary, the green scapular. Wear, wear sacramentals because that gives you what's called signal grace. Signal grace or actual grace comes from sacramentals. A moment that you're being tempted, boom, that sacramental you have around your neck gives you that strength at that moment to resist. Next, Catholic men, you should be reading the Bible every day. Make it simple. I'll make it simple. I've been reading the Bible every day since the age of 26. I'm 57, 31 years. You know what I do? It's simple. I read the mass readings every day. There you go, First, right there. Psalm, gospel, boom. It takes me five to seven minutes, and I just make the sign of the cross. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. I, I, I have the mass readings on my phone, my tablet or the church bulletin, read the mass readings every day, make the sign of the cross before you do, and God is going to give you a word for the day, a word for the week, a word for the month. He may even answer a question that you've had for a long time That's about right. a certain issue. Okay? Those, and, and, and then the final thing I would say is this, okay? Go to mass every Sunday without fail. Don't make excuses. Oh, you know, this pillow feels real soft. Oh, I got to watch ESPN today. Don't make excuses. Man up. Be a man. Go to Mass every Sunday. Take your family and go Wait to man, Mass. I, I thought going to Mass was for just for little old ladies. What do, what do you mean be a man and go to Mass? And I'll tell you why. See, you know, St. John, here's what I told uh, the, the, my boys who are wrestlers and, and, and uh, involved in mixed martial arts. I said, you guys have been wrestling since you guys were kids. You guys are involved in mixed martial arts. One's a soldier, the other one's a cop. I'll tell you what. You guys think you're tough. The devil's not afraid of your AR-15. He's not afraid of your fancy MMA. He's not afraid of your wrestling. You know what he is afraid of? St. John Chrysostom says this. Fourth century church father. He says, demons fear you the most right after you receive Holy Communion. When you receive Holy Communion, St. John Chrysostom says... The demons look at you with that fiery red blood of Jesus in your mouth. And at that moment, for the next couple of minutes, to a demon, you look like a lion breathing fire from your mouth and they flee. I told my boys that about 15 years ago. They're in their mid-20s now. They've never forgot that. But that changed the way they receive communion. And now when they go to mass, they finally they tell them, they come home, they go, hey, dad, the devil was afraid of me, man. I was breathing fire today. But Amen. Man, yeah. So, okay. I mean— I mean, that's the top of the food yeah, chain. John yeah, yeah. So, so uh, spending, uh, you know, reading, reading, meditating on God's word. That, that's, that's bread. That's, 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 that's Jesus. He's that's the awesome. word of God. Receiving oh. the Eucharist. That's the word of God. But now, Jesse, before we run out of time, because I want you to have the time to do this, would you pray for the people? Let's pray together. You, you pr do the praying. Let's all agree. Those listening to us right now that are being oppressed, uh, can you pray a, a prayer of deliverance? Um, and kind of get them started on the in the in a right new direction. Absolutely, let's uh, let's do it, my friend. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Most gracious Virgin Mary, Thou who would crush the head of the serpent, protect all of us that are listening to this show or who will listen to this show. Protect us, Mother Mary, from the vengeance of the evil one. We offer our, 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 our prayers, our supplications, our sufferings, and good works to thee, so that thou may purify them and sanctify them and pre present them to thy son Jesus as a perfect offering. Lord Jesus Christ, we ask you to protect us. Protect us from the evil one. And Mother Mary, St. Joseph, terror demons, we ask you to blind these demons so that they know not our good works. We ask you to blind them so that they know not on whom to take vengeance. 
Holy Family, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, we ask you to blind these demons so that they may receive the just sentence for their works. Lord Jesus Christ, cover us with the precious blood, your precious blood. Lord Jesus Christ, set us free. Lord Jesus Christ, heal us. Lord Jesus Christ, if there's anybody here right now that's involved in some type of sinful bondage, Lord Jesus Christ, I just ask you by your power and your blood, set them free. Mother Mary, crush the head of any infernal spirit that may be attacking or tormenting one of your sons and daughters. And I ask you right now to open your heart, open your heart to Jesus, surrender, surrender, give him your heart. And we renounce the devil. We renounce the diabolical. We, re we renounce his empty promises. We renounce the seven deadly sins. We renounce anything that offends God. And we accept you, Jesus. We accept your word. We accept your promise. We accept your grace. We accept your spirit. Father, God, in Jesus' name, set us free by the power of your cross and by the power of the blood that was shed for us on Calvary. We plead the blood of Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus, cover us with your blood. Make us strong. Empower us against the diabolical. And we also call upon St. Michael, St. Raphael, and St. Gabriel and our guardian angel to be with us and to protect us and to watch over us and to guard us. Behold the cross of the Lord. Be gone, all you evil spirits. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered you. Amen. 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 You know, I, I always used to say, uh, the first time I jumped out of an airplane, you know, it, it, it's scary. Even even the last time I jumped out, you know, skydiving is a scary thing to me. Um, the whole lead up to it, getting on the pack, getting in the plane, going up and then jumping out. But the minute you jump out, 99% of the people have this incredible look on their face. They're just, they're laughing, they're screaming. It feels so good. And when you land, you feel like you can conquer the world. That's what going to confession is like. You get all nervous. Oh, I got to call the priest. Oh, I got to do this. Man, though, when you when you jump out of that plane, when you free fall into God's grace and mercy, you feel so clean. You know, when you skydive, you don't even need to breathe. Oxygen just goes right into your body, um, right through your pores. Just make that appointment. Go to confession. Get that clean, clean feeling. And when you do, you'll know. You'll know that you can conquer the world because... You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. I need, yeah. to invite, I need to remind everybody to please go to our website, deepadventure.com, and uh, sign up for our newsletter. And uh, I need to ask Jesse again, when they want to find you, Jesse, where do they find you? Jesse Romero, where do they find you? Je if you want to invite me to your parish, do a parish mission, go to jesseromero.com or for my books, the one, Lord, Prepare My Hands for Battle, and others that I've written, jesseromero.com. If you want to listen to me on the Internet, uh, Facebook, uh, YouTube, go to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Virgin Most Powerful Radio, that's my network. Amen. You know, when Satan was defeated, it wasn't like there's so many different levels of angels. Michael the Archangel is about the third level up. Michael Correct. the Archangel and the angels kick, kick their butt. And what really makes him mad is this, this, this little maiden, this 15-year-old girl, <laughs> crushed his head. And so the powerful uh, intercession of praying the rosary, too. Jesse, thank you for being our guest. I hope you'll spend time with us again, not wait Absolutely. so long till we have we'll you on again. again. We'll okay, my again. brother. Okay, you guys, till next, till next time, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. As we say on Long Ride Home, Viva Cristo Rey! Long live Viva. Christ the King. Long live Christ. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to bearwozniak.com to get your free audio and other exciting content. Plus, you can pick up the Long Ride Home 10-episode DVD set, autographed copies of Bear's books, Long Ride Home shirts, tanks, coffee cups, and even motorcycle pins and patches. And find out how guys can sign up for Bear's Man Cave online Facebook group, all at bearwozniak.com.